room. Hello there. <laughs> Welcome to Auntie's new Winter Bloomers, the show that sends a chill through the withers of top BBC stars and presenters. Stay tuned, or licensed player, to see what the BBC head honchos have tried to keep from you. The moment you'll remember, which the stars of the BBC would rather forget. Now, as you can see, things haven't gone quite according to plan for me. <laughs> Since we last shared the BBC's darkest secrets, I've been held by the controller of programmes, Evil Henchman. I've actually been held by quite a few other things as well. But <laughs> you have to have some fun somewhere. <laughs> They've done everything you can imagine to make me crack, but my steely resolve has held firm. Despite being strapped to this chair and forced to watch some of the 750 as yet untransmitted episodes of El Dorado. <laughs> so it's only right, as we proceed through the A to Z of BBC blunders, we should start tonight with a phrase which passed my own lips and echoed round these miles of mazy corridors when the controller's hitmen got their mitts on me. Whoops. <laughs> and have you not lost the hundred pound bank bill, which is at present most of the treasure you are worth? Sir, I beseech you. <laughs> <laughs> Swig then smile. Swig smile. Speak. Exposing the pastors who are more interested in filling their pockets than their pews. On Black Britain tonight, we ask, whatever happened to faith, hope, and charity? <laughs> right. And for those who need them, the rules. Sandy's team will begin by defining that word three different ways. Only one definition is true, though. And Alan and his team will try to work out which it is. Now, the first word today is COVID, and it's Sandy. <laughs> now into there, put the butter, followed by caster sugar, the whole of the quantity of caster sugar that is there near you, followed by brown sugar. And make sure it's sugar, for goodness sake. <laughs> Can we stop for a second? I've just put the salt in. Now, here is Stanley down here looking very smart in his school uniform. This is your, your natural... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Travelling at speeds of up to 80 miles an hour, but you'd think she'd take into it like a duck to water. But behind the effortless display, there are hundreds of hours of intensive training, leading, she hopes, to be world number one. You might think that nothing could be much more cheapskate than the programmes which reach your screens via BBC One and Two, but ponder, if you will, the fate of the hapless broadcaster involved in that epitome of BBC penny-pinching, a show on which no expense has been spent. <laughs> Speaking, of course, of a pilot. In the case of the unfortunate Adam Shaw, who you'll see here eventually, this is what happens when the BBC won't pay for a radio mic and you find yourself trying to get across the studio when you have wires up the insides of your trousers. Well, this comes from Manpower, who do a survey um, four times a year. Basically, what they've done is break it down sector by sector. And if you look over here, you can see that we have the top three sectors are um, clothing, right. so manufacturing... Right. Yeah, it's right behind here. Oh. Oh, it is. Look, never mind. <laughs> clothing, when you're Try and concentrate. <laughs> All right, it's just there. Clothing, manufacturing. About it which is up 36%, <laughs> and then electronics 29, and leisure at 28. <laughs> There's one job in television which holds more perils than any other. It's surely that of the benighted interviewer. Many's the time on a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday evening in the quondam days as I sat in that lonely chair, when I had cause to regret answering that advert down at the job center. <laughs> As this frightening collection of evidence suggests, when you're working for the BBC, you'll be well advised to keep your curiosity to yourself. Because when you ask a silly question... You are a top show jumper. How many injuries have you had in your career? Um, not too many 
fatal injuries, but obviously I've had to. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it provides a, a, an environmentally uh, acceptable solution and a secure solution. How much would something like this cost? I'm going to clue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, we're now running, okay? Um, what you, would you like to be called Margarita? Margarita. Margarita. <laughs> <laughs> What sort of changes do you notice in people when they take part in something like this? Um, I haven't run one before. <laughs> <laughs> well, sharing lunch with us is David Thomas, the European MP for most of Suffolk and a tiny bit of Norfolk. He's also Labour's... Oh, what are you? I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. And in radio carbon terms, um, that gives a, a very high degree of confidence, a statistical the probability of 95% confidence, apparently. I'm all right touching this. Um, well, you shouldn't really. <laughs> <laughs> um. Of all the failings logged for posterity on these groaning shelves, the ones which I find least difficult to excuse involve an excess of something which is guaranteed to make people embarrass themselves. I speak, of course, of keenness, zeal, enthusiasm. Obviously, I can't talk from personal experience on this subject, but my studies have shown that if you show some eagerness around here, you'll soon be running into trouble. Where's Miss Carver? Sorry, Peter. Um, homework books. <coughs> right. <laughs> Josh, five pound a packet. <laughs> Farmers. Bye. Bye. Wednesdays. The factory's closed, that's why. The old bleeding country's closed. We're on short time. There's no electricity, there's no coal. I've been sleeping with me clothes on. And I can't get me buttons undone. <laughs> hey, Dave. I see you made the team today. Yes, I have, but I'm afraid my sandbox has come out and I'm not going to be able to do any more running. <laughs> <laughs> Raspberry cream. You're a hard man, McLaughlin. <laughs> Diana, please, this isn't going to help you. Diana. Diana! I've got my dress caught in the top. <laughs> Big ears will have some bad news. <laughs> you know, I don't know what people see in these things. To be honest, you don't need any artificial aids to know what's coming next around this neck of the woods. When you're with the BBC, just expect the worst. You'll never be disappointed. A lesson I've been taught by bitter experience over the long, weary years. But some others haven't been so lucky. Take this expert astronomer discussing the problems caused by floodlights. Is the political will there to tackle this problem? Well, I hope it is now. The <laughs> seminar being organised. <laughs> he should have known that that would happen. Now, that's not just a snazzy new fashion. It could actually save your life. Find out how in a few minutes. But first, Chris, patch. <laughs> Ask him, I'm telling you, when he gets back, I'm going to give him a piece of my... Did I hear the phone? Did you hear the phone? <laughs> Will it not what, dear? Melt the bag. It won't, it won't melt the bag, trust okay. me. Right. Come close to me. Now, what'll happen in a moment is we're going to seal this bag. <laughs> What's the matter with the bag? How many minutes are holding your bag?
News West gets you close to the sporting action. <laughs> Imagine I'm on a boat, it's rocky, we get hit by a wave. <laughs> Thank you. And the life jacket hasn't inflated. However, if I were to go overboard like this, then hopefully it would. However, it hasn't unfortunately worked. Well, this is live television and these kind of things do happen. Never mind. frightening sights if you hang around the BBC for too long. <laughs> this day, I haven't recovered from the time I was summoned to the controller's office for a vigorous ticking off, only to discover he'd had the place painted and decorated by Ralph Harris. <laughs> <laughs> but even that trauma paled into insignificance just recently when I came across this. An audio recording of Gabby Rosland drinking soup without her teeth in. <laughs> Difficult to capture now the full horror of the listening experience, though the image of a hurricane sweeping across an Olympic-sized swimming pool did spring to mind. <laughs> the truth is, you never know what terrifying experience will assault your ears around here, where you live in constant fear of things that go in the night. <laughs> Behind me are a couple of chicks. They gotta sit down and protect their golden eggs, right? From the That's <laughs> 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 pretty much the sport for this morning, apart from uh, one story which has uh, caught our attention in the Express today. Um, and well, it's the... short, I mean, this, this is presenting the FAZ. Well, well, hang on, this... we should just say, <laughs> before we go on, if you can hear an extraordinary noise in the background, it is not our stomachs rumbling or anything like that. <laughs> it is a phantom driller somewhere in the building. We are searching for him. When he is found, he will be taken out and dealt with. <laughs> he doesn't need anyone. He's all just messing us up. Wait. I'll take you. Right? I'll take you. <laughs> <laughs> begins on BBC One at 11.35 this morning. You want to speak with a <laughs> There's an extraordinary noise in the background there. There, there, there has either been an earthquake or part of the I studio is falling up. Yes. Action! Oh, yeah. world of television is full of surprises. Only the other day, I came across this. The long-lost film of Michael Burke's audition to be Basil Brush's right-hand man. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, a few seconds of that, and I was the one dialing 999. <laughs> but that's my fault. Round here, you have to expect the unexpected. Looking at the stars as a physicist has always led me into deeper questions about the universe. Questions such as why is the universe in... <laughs> Before then, it's my turn to find a solution for someone with a demanding daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you next Sunday. Oh, I wonder. Would you like to... <laughs> Transfer <laughs> The last years of the GLC were marked by a series of long-running battles with the government, not just over policy, but over naked people, like there's a naked man over there. I'll, uh... Um... Uh, 
Ah, yes, your nerves can be in flitters if you spend any time around Television Center. I'm an exception, of course, as I spent the last few days resisting the threats of the controller's torture team. True, <laughs> but if they'd done what they said, they we're going to do with this. <laughs> or indeed, this. <laughs> this evening might not have been quite so enjoyable. I just laughed in their faces. You see, if you work for the BBC, things are always verging on the ridiculous. Oh, yeah, I want to speak to Inspector Casey. No, I'm not going to say who it is. Just put me through. Casey, it's me. Sorry, I've forgotten my line. I'll get back to you. <laughs> don't you realize the terrible danger you put me into? Where is the Guardian now? We don't know. We're searching for him. I have alerted all the watchers. This is simply not good enough. Now, another group fighting for survival is the region's fruit growers. The more pessimistic predict that within a decade... <laughs> 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 A man trapped in his burning house in Middlesbrough has been savaged by two teenaged boys. Saved, I should say, by two teenage boys. <laughs> Just forget, don't know it's a moment's respect, Inspector. Can we give a little to the living? His daughter's with him, and before you ask, there's no point trying to talk to her. She's in a state of shock. I'm going to seduce her and keep her in overnight. <laughs> His daughter's with him, and before you ask, there's no point trying to talk to her. She's in a state of shock. I'm going to seduce her and... And before you ask, there's no point trying to talk to her. She's in a state of shock. I'm going to sedate her, keep her in overnight. Now, for all the heavy glamour of life with the BBC, the lunchtime soirees in the canteen with more spotted dick than you can shake a stick at, the Christmas parties with the governors, the sanatogen flows like water. You even get a decent suck on the communal twiglet. <laughs> it's fair to say that into the life of every broadcaster, a little rain must fall. In my case, of course, we've had a damp spell since around the time of decimalization. <laughs> Not bitter. Just makes me enjoy all the more the experience of others. We've also had days when they wish they'd stayed in bed. <laughs> oh, yes, certainly, madam, no problem. Oh. <laughs> Chancellor Cole is preparing to push through his programme of cuts in spite of all protests. His own chief a clear message that Nina Times are on the way. For the rest of you... Please go away! Not so loud. Would you prefer to get out and push? Just drive quietly. Fine, thank you, Jack. <laughs> Good. I've got so few lines, I've forgotten the one I've got. <laughs> well, you'll have to wait till later in the show to find out who were the winning girls. Before that, a little history. From the suffragettes to Spice, every decade has had its female icons. Now, that really f***s it up. <laughs> And so, Land Rover's smallest car to date seems destined to have the biggest impact on the company. They're talking of making them at the rate of 75,000 a year. That would take production at Load Lane to over 200,000, creating and safeguarding thousands of jobs. Mark Foster, Midlands Today. <laughs> Where am I? Rwy'n drodd ar y sy'n bop yn y chwedegau, a byth ers hynny mae wedi bod yn un o'r ychydig berfformwyr Cymreig sy wedi canolbwyntio'n llwyr ar yrfa ganu. Heno ar dan yr wyneb, mae'n yw sydd ag un o leisiau gorau Cymru. No, it's c***. <laughs> but, just in case, I've drawn up my usual checklist. <laughs> Now, 
cast your mind back, if you will, to the events of the spring when the BBC's mighty news gathering machine rolled into action to cover the momentous events of the general election. I'm sure you'll agree that the coverage was executed like a military operation. Napoleon's retreat from Moscow. <laughs> our next batch of incriminating evidence is anything to go by. In our A to Z guide, X is for crosses in the box. After this morning's manifesto launch, uh, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, William Waldegrave, will be holding a news conference to explain just how the figures stack up. It's odd, isn't it? This is such a turnaround. These also always used to be the questions asked of Labour. <laughs> well, exactly. Uh, I think there's a part of the, the backdrop is uh, <laughs> collapsing around me. I don't know whether that's symbolic or not. Labour candidates in the general election. All right. Nice to see you. Nice All right. <laughs> the Pollitts appear to be about to celebrate their victory there. With a Grand Prix size bottle of champagne, which won't open. Well, there we are. I think the thing to do is shake it and and just see if the cork will pop out. No, they were called champagne socialists, but they're clearly very incompetent champagne socialists. <laughs> The committee membership is pretty formidable, ought really to be and will. Uh, and my, uh, as I was about to say, my expectation, I better retreat on that, I better say, hope, uh, will be able to rise above uh, the fact that it is a, a pre election period. Both sides are down there with uh, Sorry, we've had a minor dis disaster here. This is the first time in anyone's memory that a serving Prime Minister has come to Northern Ireland in the course of a general election campaign. Party sources say this is not a normal campaigning trip, but three days out from an election, how can it be seen as anything different? And this draws a plate. John Sobel there proving that when you work for the BBC, it's easy to get carried away. And for my own amusement, I'm just compiling a list of phrases you'll never, ever hear around here. Things like the controller of programme saying, Just a small one for me. <laughs> my shout. <laughs> or, I think we've had enough fly on the wall documentaries for the time being. <laughs> Though as well as things you'll never hear, there are, of course, things that you just can't utter when you're under the iron grip of a BBC contract. Any chance of a pay rise, for example? <laughs> Sometimes, no matter how hard you try to stop yourself, these things slip out. So in our A to Z guide, Y is for... You can't say that. That's it. <laughs> and obviously, the, uh, the tight you hold I'm it... I'm getting the, big... the hang of this now. Yeah. This is looking rather good. Yeah. But if, you, if you hold it tight, it'll get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say things like that. Right. <laughs> There we go. Oh, dear. <laughs> Chris, obviously a great team, world, world champions, um, but you must know each other's strengths and weaknesses, do you? We do indeed. We've played each other so many times on the circuit as individuals in competition. Um, it's more unusual, really, for us to be in, in a team together, uh, although we train and play with each other all the time. <laughs> And it's warm and wet in London this morning. Let's find out uh, how Isabel Lang is. Warm and wet as well. <laughs> so where are we going this year, Mr. Britters? Sorry, I'll f*** up. <laughs> I do beg your pardon. I appear to have made a mistake. <laughs> Now, going supersonic on land isn't just about smashing records, it's about taking new risks on as well. Once a vehicle like this goes through the sound barrier, the shock waves that normally stream away from it as sound bunch up, and the vehicle actually catches up with its own shock waves. This can be potentially very dangerous. The car becomes a vibrator. <laughs> uh, Lenny Lawrence pushing up front before, and from then it's just clicked to us. Do you always know where he's going to be? Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that, but I think he, he knows where my balls are going to be more than that.
experienced as you are in picking over the bones of the careers that have been laid to rest in this dim dungeon of despair, you have noticed the absence thus far of some of the creatures who are guaranteed to strike fear into the hearts of any television performer. I speak not of the scriptwriters of Prisoner Cell Block H, <laughs> or even the Nolan sisters. <laughs> As we approach the last round up in our A to Z guide, Z is for Zoo TV. Maybe if you just point it a little bit further. Yeah, this. He's just food on me. <laughs> Let me get going. Take a look at this gorgeous backdrop. Isn't it heavenly? Hampton Court Palace is its absolute best. Now, this is just the start of the programme. We'll be travelling all over London for the rest of our games, returning to this neck of the woods for our auction at the end of the programme. <laughs> Always a privilege to witness the opening moments of one of nature's greatest journeys. But for these turtles, the adventure's just beginning. Um. Fire your torch, fire your torch. And stand uh, up, stand uh, up! Uh, <laughs> Our time together has been mercifully brief, but if you'll forgive me, I fear I must away before the controller's chief enforcer gets back from his Monday night evening class. I'm told his embroidery is coming on a treat. <laughs> well, enough of Jeremy Paxman's hobbies. <laughs> Until our next rummage through Auntie's Bloomers, farewell. Getting it right next here on BBC One, new period drama with the nannies of Barclay Square.